would be selling for about two thousand dollars an ounce and it's currently selling for about uh, i don't know today is i don't have uh, my laptop uh, in front of me but it's probably selling for about 935 uh, an ounce so it's 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 deeply discounted relative to paper assets like stocks and like bonds so again if i had some if I had some money uh, where I could do long-term investing, where I didn't need it tomorrow or the next day or even next year, I would say that on a relative basis, uh, gold looks attractive. Uh, as far as bonds go, uh, in in a, in a uh, scary environment that we're now in, uh, you see uh, you see a flight. It's called a flight to safety. You see uh, you see investors uh, dumping stocks and dumping corporate bonds and and other junk. And, uh, and going into U.S. Treasuries. Uh, yesterday, uh, as the stock market collapsed, uh, U.S. Tre uh, two-year Treasuries uh, jumped because uh, the yields jumped, which means that the, uh, it's kind of a complicated scenario, but, but the point is that, you, that investors dumped stocks and went into Treasuries because it's a safe haven. It's called a flight to safety. They're seeking safe havens. One safe haven is U.S. Treasuries. Uh, particularly short-term ones. You want to go short-term, and another safe haven. I think right now, if you had some throwaway money or some long-term money, would be uh, gold. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Do we have another caller? Nope. So, so call. John, as far as investing in uh, uh, oil futures, um, <laughs> I, I hear. I mean, it's very speculative at this point. But is there any speculation that's uh, going? To, or is there anything that's going to actually change us with the Saudis playing their chip and holding back on their supply for some? backroom deal that they're waiting for is there is there something that's going to stop this oil run-up well when you say when you talk about commodity futures let, let me just put this out to again our listening audience in, in no shape way in no shape way or form under no circumstances do i think our average listeners should be engaging in uh future speculation or commodity speculation I've worked on the floor of the COMEX. I've worked on the floor of the New York Mercantile Exchange. I was one of those crazy men in the ring that, that you see uh, yelling and screaming, uh, you know, in uh, what, what looks like uh, total chaos. And I will tell you up front that short-term speculators almost always lose 99.9% .9 of the time, short-term speculators. And the institutional guys and the floor guys are the ones that make money over the long Good haul. advice. Good, Good advice. Caller. That's, that's probably the best advice I'll give. Let's take the next caller. Yes, next caller, please. Hey, can you hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. It's a great show, and be wonderful you. if um, you'd ID yourselves for people who are going, what is this? It's Friday morning. Uh, so just a little tip there. But my questions are a little bit pronged. Um, I'm wondering if you could address this, the level of... Um, socially uh, just investing and the greenwashing around that and then the real thing and whether or not you think any of those funds or any of those places are any safer and then to walk out a little bit farther with that and what do you think about doing really alternative kinds of investing at this time that are either more community-based or more micro um, loan based and and looking at some different models of how we can keep money in our own communities thank you well, I was. It's too bad you've uh, you've jumped off the line. I was going to ask you what you had in mind when you said community-based investing. Um, as far as the uh, progressive investing goes, or the social responsible investing, as as it's also known, um, uh, I plan on having a uh, a guest on a future show who will speak directly to that. Um, I have been um, an investor in progressive funds um, in the past. I uh, it's it's certainly where my heart is. Uh, can an investor make money? Um, in this market environment, uh, again, I think uh, short to intermediate turn, we're, we're looking at a protracted uh, bear market. I think we're looking at stagflation that's going to be driving that protracted bear market. So I'm a little wary of any paper asset right now. Um, uh, green technologies as a subset of uh, progressive funds is particularly attractive. Next caller. Caller, you're on. Oh, good morning. Good morning. I just called in to um, recommend a financial uh, website. Or, uh, um, it's uh, called decisionmoose.com, and it's just very interesting. Uh, this guy, William Durham, um, <clears throat> kind of looked at the uh, world invest or the world money system as a closed loop and follows about nine different uh, 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 parts of it. And... Uh, it's just a very informative and 
he also has uh, one section called Moose Calls, in which uh, he'll give an update, a weekly update on uh, where the money is going and uh, possible places to put yours. Uh, but he um, doesn't make any money off this site at all. And uh, it's just really informative. So, but, Thank you, sir. What's the name of the site again? DecisionMoose.com. Decision Moose. Uh-huh. All right. I'll look it up. Thank Thanks you, sir. Uh, well, we're uh, winding up our uh, our show, Jay. Our second show. Yeah. I want to thank you very much. What's uh, the name of the show again, John? Uh, the name of our show. <laughs> we have a checklist, I think. <laughs> <laughs> the name of our show is The Truth About Money with uh, John Sackowitz. I've uh, been a, a Wall Street insider for uh, the better part of 29 years. And Jay Johnson, um, who is a very media-savvy guy and, I dare say, a, uh, an investor-savvy guy as well. Um, oh, Want to thank our uh, our guest Doug Henwood. Uh, we would love to have him back on again. Uh, we'll try to uh, get Ed Krug on uh, at some future point uh, to talk about the real estate market. Uh, I want to uh, uh, remind uh, listeners uh, that we are on uh, generally on on uh, Norman Duvall's former slot. I think he's uh, taking a leave of absence for a few months, so that would be Fridays uh, uh, at nine for an hour. And are we going on?